It is January in Jamaica, and at this time of year, it is common to see a native plowman with his picturesque team of oxen plowing these great fields ready for the planting of new banana estates. The soil is rich and deep. After ploughing, it is harrowed by this tractor. Then it will lie fallow for a couple of months. In the first week in March, the ploughman will be out once more to plough and cross-plough the fields. After the small banana shoots have been planted, these labourers, mostly women, keep the rows of small plants free from weeds by constantly hoeing the earth round them. It is hard work in the broiling tropical heat, as you can see. But in Jamaica, they may have long droughts and so the banana plantations have to be irrigated. The rivers, therefore, have dams constructed across them so that reservoirs can be made. The waters are led through these streams and channels to ditches beside the plantations. Here, the water is diverted into smaller ditches between each row of trees. And every five or six days, the water is allowed to flood the field to a depth of several inches. When the water has soaked in, the earth is once again harrowed to remove all weeds and also to aerate the soil. Here, a new shoot known as a sucker can be seen growing beside a four-year-old tree. Regular pruning takes place until the following April, all weeds and useless foliage being cut away from the base. The banana tree bears a beautiful flowery blossom. Bananas, incidentally, grow with their points to the sky, and the tree only produces one stem of fruit. When the fruit is ready to be harvested, a cutter makes one or two deft cuts in the trunk and the whole top of the plant slowly falls over. The stems, as these huge branches are called, are skillfully caught to prevent the fruit from being bruised, for rough treatment makes the bananas unfit to travel over the sea. They are green when cut down and ripen during the voyage. They are then carried to a clearing on the plantation where bullock carts wait to take them to the rail head. These stems are very heavy and usually weigh anything between 80 to 100 pounds. This checker can tell at a glance the quality of a stem and enters it in his book. This man is called a snipper, and his job is to cut off the ends of the stems as they pass by.
The bananas are now loaded onto the bullock wagons. And once again, great care has to be taken during the loading not to bruise the fruit. The packing that you can see on the sides of the wagon is all the waste leaves that have been saved and is known as trash. From the plantations, the bananas are transported to the railways. There, they are loaded into huge box cars. The stems are checked again during the loading. The scene at the docks is one of continual movement as a ceaseless procession of native labourers carries the fruit from sheds to the ship. On arrival, the bananas have first to pass through these sheds, past another check where they are finally trimmed, then out to the quayside where the ship is waiting. To the casual eye, everything seems confusion, but beneath this seeming chaos, lies a plan of order almost military in its precision. The bananas are then carried past a labour checking machine. Finally, they are loaded straight into the holds of the ship. The holds have to be specially cooled and insulated to preserve the fruit on its long journey to England and all parts of the world. The loading goes on day and night at a terrific speed, as time is money and the ship must leave in the shortest possible time. Thus millions of bananas are shipped overseas every year to England and the world.